Happy Monday, everybody. Yo. Hello. Hey, everybody, it's a new day. Same year. Uh, yeah. Only we're back to work. Yeah, man. As if we never left. We are working for you, the listening public. Is this the Sorry. is this the Gex? No, this is a uh, Anamanaguchi. Oh, Anamana, Anamanaguchi. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> but it does it does have a Gek like sound. It has a, it has a Gek-y like. sound. Do they have a new album coming out? Not, not that we know of. Oh, I thought for for a while Reddit was feeding me the hundred Gek subreddit. Yeah, and. Uh, there were a lot of they were on the tour at the time and so there were a lot of like pictures and videos of them out on tour and i thought i remembered them i i don't know saying something like that i don't exactly anyway lay look man you want to know what hey, hey uh, we're all just having a good time i don't know what any of those words mean yeah guys. i'm uh, just a simple country bumpkin here robert durst he 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 was that dude the jinx yeah 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 what about him the Gex, the Jinx, got it. Oh, okay, I get you talking about He's now. He's dead. Totally got it. Durst died? Yeah. Oh. Mm. You know, I was going to make a quip, like, who do you like? Who's your favorite person that hasn't died this year? Now we get the, at least, you know, you know, Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, yeah. that, that was, well, oh, uh, yeah, that was New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Bob Saget. Oh, yeah. 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 He was beloved. This is great you know. warm up energy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you just got uh, done listening to Bob Saget eulogizing like Norm MacDonald and yeah. then oh. Bob Saget. Oh. Wait a minute. Is this like it it follows where it's like none of us should eulogize yeah. anybody? <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's yeah. as it should be. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Uh are we ready to do the show? Yeah. Ready. Okay, we'll give we'll let Andrew finish. Uh Brussel Bear says ten thousand gex is confirmed for early twenty twenty two. Look at that. Okay. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. I'd be down for a new album. Um I know they've been I don't doing normally feel cool, but I really feel uncool right now. So <laughs> it's a band. It's a band. It's a band, I, I man. Figured that part out, guys. They got music, man. It's very uh uh hard to get into. You should not feel bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 very almost aggressively weird. All right, I'll count you in to start weird things here in three, two. Hello and welcome to Weird Things. I am Intermean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh, hello, everybody. All right, gentlemen, welcome to this round of Weird Things COVID Survivor Series. Are we ready? Let's do a query. Brian, have you had COVID yet? Yeah, uh, yeah, and I survived it. Yay! Bryce, have you had COVID yet? Uh, no, I did get my booster the other day, but I've not, uh, I've not mm-hmm. caught, not that I am aware of. Okay. Uh, Provisionally, uh, accepted into the group, I guess. No, sorry. Uh, uh, I into indeed, the cr- uh, uh, the beta beguiler, the Delta Dodger, the Kron confounder, the soul super spreader survivor, the man for whom COVID is just pew, too slow. Can't catch it. Can't catch me. Uh, Andrew? Andrew? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, you got oh, no! it, didn't you? You got it. All you right, had, so you had you had a, you had a, you had a situation too. You were it was it was yeah, hard to track so, down. That's not good. Word to the wise here. Um, nobody knows anything. That's our theory right now. And I went traveling. Uh, I was in Florida. I was in Las Vegas, traveling a bit, which basically just inviting, just just like saying, mm-hmm. you know, at like you know, tail hook in Las Vegas, like come at me. Um. And uh, Tra- traveling is like the equivalent of when you're walking around Costco and everyone's offering out free samples. Yeah. You're like, yes, yeah. to all of those. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, more cheese. I'm going to the duck pond covered in bread. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> I get back and like this was this was this was one of those periods where it was like the week where like you heard more people getting COVID than anybody than yep. all the people like the previous year was like everybody like the numbers don't even know. So I get back, I get sick, and then I find out, you know, I visit my parents, I found out my mom had gotten, okay? I'm like, okay, and I'm, I'm feeling sick. I'm like, 
but it's like I travel and it's sort of like I had the runny nose kind of thing. And I get that before, you know, sometimes when I travel a bit, I'm like, I don't feel like I'm not like, uh, dying. I'm like, uh, this is, it's not the worst flu I've ever had. It's not yeah. pleasant, but it's not, you know, I would even say the aches I got from the booster were worse in a short period than what I was experiencing. Yeah. And I'm like, is this, this COVID? I don't know. And then, you know, I was feeling kind of really just no energy, or whatever. My girlfriend's usually get tested. I'm like, eh, whatever it is, I'm going to have to endure it. And then there's an urgent care across the street from me. And I'm like, ah, you know what? I should probably just know. It's so like, go in there. I'm like, Hey, I'd like, uh, I would like to get a COVID test. Like, Oh, do you want to do the, uh, do you want to do the antigen test? Do you want to do the PCR? I'm like, what's the difference? If one's 95 and one's $199. I'm like, I don't care. I want the best test. <laughs> you know, me, you know, money exactly. bags testing. Yeah. yeah. And, and she's like, oh, well, you know, if you're already symptomatic and I'm like blowing my nose constantly, then the antigen test should be fine. That should be good. I'm like, really? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what the doctors say. If you do the antigen test, if you already have the symptoms, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. I get the antigen test. Go home, get a call like 30 minutes. I'm there actually there. And they come back, congratulations, you don't have COVID. You're negative. I'm like, oh. Cool. All right. No COVID for me. I'm which, a COVID dodger. Which, by the way, that, uh, that, that's always a weird moment where it's like, congratulations. I mean, I'm still sneezing, but but <laughs> nobody say congratulations. Nobody. It's not like Brian. They they handed put a you know put a you know lanyard around my neck and yeah. give me flowers. Oh, right. All the doctors yeah. came out. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I I definitely wore a ribbon that said uh, first <laughs> COVID of my friends. So they're like, you're negative. I'm like, okay. I go home and. My girl, Everyone's like, what's up? I'm like, um, uh, it's say actually fiance now because of our announcement, but that's mm. neither here nor there. But anyhow, um, I get home. I'm like, oh, and then like two days later, she's sick. And I'm like, well, that ain't good. And she's like, I want to get tested. I'm like, well, I came back negative. What's the point? They told me. I'm like, ah, fine. So I take her to go test it. I'm like, you know what? Let's do that PCR test instead of the antigen test. So she gets the PCR test. An hour later, you got COVID. I'm like, Huh. Interesting. Pretty sure she has what I had. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, my mom tested. I don't know what my mom tested for, but I'm like, I wonder. I'm like, you know what? I go back across the street. I'm like, I would like a PCR test. Now, so now I'm like, I'm like, you know, 500 bucks into testing now. <laughs> and uh, I'm curious. And they're like, <laughs> testing. Get tested. Not even hour once. Later, <laughs> hour later, PCR. Congratulations. You have COVID. Yeah. So I'm like, huh um well that's interesting because i'm like telling the clinic i'm not yelling i'm like you know you've been telling people do the antigen test because you're symptomatic i took the antigen test it said negative how many people have been coming in here what's the ratio am i a, am i this weird I, statistical outlier well, I, I read up on this because those two different tests are two different sensitivities right the yes. the pcr is much more sensitive so it notices more latent uh m more more latent uh um virus in, yeah. in your stream Viral versus the, load yeah versus the antigen which is a higher which is a uh, uh uh has a lower sensitivity so you need to have more of a load to test to detect more of a load yeah which <laughs> is supposed to t t they say key into your like uh contagious level like once once the once the uh once the PCR, antigen test once, can, yeah once yeah. the antigen test can't detect it you're less contagious might but less you might contagious. still have it right and you may have but here's the problem okay uh there i got home and a couple hours later new york times has an article hey the antigen test is is reliable with omicron <laughs> and i'm like oh, okay the mm. other problem is that if you took the antigen test and, and people when and you're getting we're getting advice based upon in the perfect scenario, well, if you take it three days into the window of you have it, I'm like, who knows what that is? Nobody you don't right. know. Nobody has right. any Nobody idea. Knows. Yeah. And if you took the antigen test and you're like, oh, I'm clean, they're like, well, that's because you're no longer contagious. Great. Do I go tell the people that I was around four days before? No, I wouldn't, because I had an antigen test. I don't have COVID. And you're like, that's the problem. It's like, again, nobody knows anything. And so it's fine. It's fine for us to have be in a state of we don't quite understand. It's when people speak confidently. That bothered me a bit about the clinic. Like, oh, yeah, no. Well, the doctor said this. I'm like, well, here are two reports. Go take these back to your doctors and show them. You have at least one example of somebody who 24 hours ago tested negative with an antigen and 24 hours later positive a piece. And I've had people go, well, that's because you were at the higher stage. I'm like, no, I was past the big symptoms at that point. It's like yeah. nobody knows anything. So, uh, 
confounding things even farther, uh, I, I have read that uh, Omicron is an upper respiratory infection that doesn't make it down to the lungs, which is good uh, theoretically because it does less damage or whatever. Uh, but but that it also changes if you do an antigen test, it's possible that you should do it twice, one in your nose and then one in the back of your throat because people yep. have uh, anecdotally reported that they get different results. I've heard that I, and, and very possibly. And I think I would say that the frustrating part was like I read that New York Times study and they're like, well, we did a study of like 30 people. And I'm like, you mean like the FDA and like the CDC doesn't have like. 10 different research hospitals right now ongoing every week doing these kinds of like testing these kids, testing this stuff on like a big effort. You would think that would make kind of sense to be able to say like to do preliminary sort of stuff like this, but it see it still seems so slapdash and haphazard. Well, and, and the CDC eh, had a bit of a rough start to their messaging on <laughs> on well, all of this. Some, some, some might also say they've had a rough that middle and a, uh, <laughs> a, a pretty dicey current position. I'm trying to be real generous. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that, that uh, uh, the most generous uh, 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 dissection of the CDC's messaging, I think, came from former FDA head Scott Gottlieb, who, who is somebody who just wrote a book about the COVID response, but and and who knows exactly how much FDA CDC rivalry is? I have no idea. But his point was the CDC is not there. They're not built for in the moment messaging. They are built for long term studies for which they are so risk averse. They are so scared of their own shadow that they will only say things at their best. They will only say things that they are very 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 sure is true. The the stuff that happens now when people are looking to them and they're being asked to do. These incremental stuff plays to all the weaknesses of that entire structure. They're, they're, they're not good at it. They're not good at fact gathering. They're not good at, at, at bureaucratically finding something that would be a good and valuable message to a frightened public. They are they are just, this is not something that they are built was, for at all. Was it a CDC message or an FDA message to cut up your t-shirts and wrap them around your face two years ago? I I, I don't know where the mask guidance initially came from. I mean, everything was so kind of one mouthpiece with like the federal government at that point. But sure. like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the noble lie of don't wear masks or no, you should wear masks, but also wear cloth masks because we don't want you all to go buy N95 masks as if immediately everybody was going to go buy N95 masks. Or I guess enough people that would affect hospital PPE. That that's that's I mean again it's it's when when you get into a situation where you're like sure we just need to lie but if we tell the right lie it's going to be for the best reasons I, it's not great. I'm at the point too where when they said no masks like because now we're told like there that my I realized there was like that the kind of the rephrase like well we had to tell people this because of this like like no I don't think you knew I don't think you bothered to ask the questions like I look at this because it was a respiratory virus I think that you guys that people are people in charge went off with half-assed information they hadn't been critically evaluating. And then, then they're like, well, we knew, but we had, I'm like, no, I don't think, I don't, I think, cause like you look at the mistakes made along the way when they ignored experts on airborne viruses and stuff, when they just flat out, the WHO is flat out shutting people down and stuff and that. I think it's kind of more of a like, uh, we, we decided to say, we thought this because we didn't bother to do the science <laughs> is what it feels like now. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I, I think, I don't know of a of a a national or international health organization for which uh, I mean, an American or an international health organization for which I think I've looked at and been like, damn, thank God they're around. I'm really yeah. glad. I'm really glad that I, these guys are here. Yeah. Like my the thing about the whole, oh, we told people not to wear masks because we needed to save them. It's like, OK, cool. So you got this airborne virus ripping through the entire population at a rapid pace and you're like, yeah. no, don't wear masks. We need to save them for the hospitals. That That's when I look back, I go like, well, that, that's just stupid. It just Doesn't seems seem dumb. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like you're like, like, you know, maybe focus putting them an elderly and at risk. And so it's like, you know, we're still, the accountability is frustrating and it's, you know, we've got, uh, uh, Matt, Matthew, uh, Matt Ridley in Elena Chan's book, Viral, has been out now for a couple weeks. It's getting great reviews and pushback. And the point of the book is like to look into sort of the origins of COVID. Yeah. And they still get people who go, 
what difference does it make? They're going like, what? Why should we even bother? Because it might, you know, do we want to anger? And we still get people going, we why do why should we know this? And it's like, like there are rumors, you know, that Omicron, like people say, Omicron could have been another lab escape. Maybe I don't know. I don't want to start anything and say that we we don't have evidence for it, but we know that in Taiwan recently there was an outbreak in a lab, and they they documented, they explained it. They were very forthcoming about it. The Taiwanese were very forthcoming. We had an accident. There was an outbreak here. And that shows you the right way to do it. You got to know a lot of things don't happen. And we are, we may be more at risk now. I used to think at the start of this, oh, 10 years from now, we're going to be better off than we were before because of all the mRNA stuff. I don't feel that way anymore because the fact that we're two years in and nobody even wants to look at the labs and how these things are being handled and the way things, we're not getting the data we're supposed to be. And we're getting a lot of scientists pushing back and saying, oh, does it make a difference? It's like, yeah, we've got millions of people dead and we don't know where it came from, and we have people who are trying to, scientists trying to shut down other scientists who are saying we need answers to these questions, and that terrifies me. So uh, among your worries, uh, have you lost faith in mRNA vaccines, or, or no, is it more I, I just communication? MRNA. Yeah. I believe in mRNA. I think mRNA is, could, will be huge, but I think the, potent, the problem is, is that the community early on, when the the idea that there was a, the evidence, the uh, evidence that it was a lab leak came out, you had scientific journals publishing papers with people saying, "No, this is a this is rumor mongering, whatever." And it turns out, a year took a year to get some of them to even admit the fact that they were biased or they had been associated with the research to do proper disclosures. Scientific journals took spent a year not disclosing the fact that people saying this is BS were the people involved in funding. Yeah. You have a huge disclosure problem. You have a huge data problem. You have a government in the case of China that does not want to cooperate, isn't providing data on this. And you have people who are doing, you know, well-intentioned research. Let's look at a lab leak getting shut down by mainstream scientists and other people. I'm not talking about the conspiracy theorists in the anti-vax community and people like that, that no amount of evidence will convince them otherwise, but literally trying to do a genuine investigation is being criticized and shut down by this and not supported. That terrifies me because now there are way more labs researching these things. Yeah. Way so, more labs. So so and, you and, you are you are you are saying that there is institutional rot amongst yes. the scientific community and and that is something that has been laid bare by this pandemic and and so if we look at this as okay, well when we're on the other side of this there'll, there'll be a teachable moment, we'll have something far more relevant than 1918 to understand a a pandemic of you, you're saying, well, hopefully, but we, we if you look at, at at where our floorboards are in terms of, of how creaky everything was and the fact that they don't seem to be uh, repairing themselves now, then then maybe if they survive this, then it's going to be even worse 10 years from now. Uh, two years ago, we had dozens of labs around the world that were doing viral research, and many of them were very sloppy. Many of them were, stuck, were doing things, and you, know, you talk about the bio-level safety standards and stuff that were violating stuff. You had leaks all the time. We had SARS virus got out multiple times. We know this. There have been previous minor pandemic epidemics that have been caused by leaks. This is this is known. This is known. This is a problem. Two years ago, we had we get this, which the evidence I think strongly supports lab leak. That's my personal opinion like this. Now we went from dozens of labs doing this kind of research to now we have hundreds of labs doing this kind of research. And we have we can't even account for what happened before. And now we have hundreds of labs doing this sort of research, which I would be all for. I'm pro-science if I had any confidence that the people doing this were acting, the, the ones, the bureaucrats running these sorts of things and the, the officials running this were well-intentioned in behaving that, and that has not been the case. That right. is uh, and, and, and that is one of those things where it's like you have to assume that everybody is a good faith negotiator, which is curious to me because uh, uh, every morning – I open up New York Times to look at their uh, coronavirus dashboard, and uh, for many months uh, or weeks, I've been happy in a weird way to, to see, like, yes, we're seeing the Omicron variant uh, continue to go up, but we're seeing number of deaths go down. Now we're starting to see deaths go up. But then there's this global map, and uh, and, and at this point, like, like uh, Canada, America, just dark purple, black, or whatever— uh, that, and that is the most the most infected on their color map. Correct, uh, as is uh, Australia. But meanwhile, like uh, mainland China, just still reporting no problems here. Like like uh, our, our uh, uh, yeah, no, three thousand people dead, uh, and they were all in Taiwan. Isn't that crazy? Uh, okay, so I mean, I mean, I I, I don't want to. Well, they they just they just reported yesterday the first case is Omicron in China, and remember the the Chinese response is. 
tremendous amounts of testing, huge amount of testing, and the moment somebody tests positive, they shut down that city. Yeah. They literally shut down the city. And, you know, you've got, you know, uh, so yeah, I don't, I, I want to see, I want to know what happened to the old, old folks' homes and some of the prisons early on in China. Like, you know, yeah. suspect. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I mean... On our spinoff foreign policy things, I feel like we can all have very, very pointed opinions about the, the, the Chinese Communist Party and their handling and transparency on this. But uh, uh, in, in, in general, uh, it, is, it is very interesting to understand where politics and science intersect. And I think, Andrew, that's your larger point here, is that between the bureaucratic rot uh, and then understanding that in a world in which governments and and large political forces will lean on on uh, uh, these organizations to shape the truth and control them with funding, it's it's an issue. It is a real think, issue. And the question comes up to why has there not been an investigation? And it, it, it can mean multiple reasons. One of the things was uh, there are very few people capable who understand this this who understand you know you know, biology, understand this and understand these organizations. And when you try to draw upon the pool of people, who would you have investigate this? And this has happened before when you've had like anthrax, like who we're going to investigate, who, who are we going to ask to go look into this anthrax and inve- this thing? Well, our number one person to ask is also our number one suspect. The people involved, there are, you're talking about, and, and, and this is not a, Hey, I blame China thing because the latest, you know, the latest theory is that this research was funded by the U.S. and via groups like EcoHealth Alliance and whatnot, who have not who have received millions and millions of dollars of funding from the government to then dole that out to different groups and have not been forthcoming. They have we've been groups have been fighting the government to get documents for government funded research. You know, people complain about hey, government funded research in journals that you have to pay access to. We can't even just get documents explaining where was the money going to were we importing were we paying to import bats from laos into wuhan and and some people are going wait we were paying for like we were doing turns out we were doing gain of function that stated we were paying to do gain of function research in a chinese lab that shares space with the chinese military that's uh, cool. a progress that's that's uh, bringing everybody together what could go wrong Cool. That's like a James Bond plot. Like we think some money has been diverted to this lab and they're importing bats. Like you could build a whole story. Like, no, no, it's totally cool, guys. It's totally cool. They told me it's cool. That's kind of the challenge of this show. <laughs> like, yeah. Like that. It's a it theory. It's just, I'm just, he's just asking questions. Just ask yeah. questions. Well, but, anyhow. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, one last question that, <laughs> that is not a blame game. Uh, 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 I, I believe it was this morning was the first time I, I read about a, a, a Delta Cron variant. Uh, <sighs> I'm in the knew? Pizza Hut. I'm in the Taco Bell. I'm in the combination Pizza <laughs> yeah. Hut and Taco Bell. Who knew the Hasbro cartoon series writers from the 1980s were planning this thing out? <laughs> uh, yeah. So is that a real thing? I... I I, I, so a professor at the University of Cyprus said it, said Delta Cron. Um, uh, CNBC I mean, says that they found 20. good branding. Fun. So I feel like there's a thing that I've wanted to do for a while, and I think I kind of cracked it on like why tech journalism, science journalism, and I would assume a lot of other niche journalism uh, that has this element is really just become crap. Uh, and, and by and large, I don't mean that there's not really, really good people doing really, really good work. There almost always is. But if we're going to judge the industry as a whole, a lot of crappy stuff uh, comes through. And part of it is the idea of just rewriting the press release. Um, and And this is the kind of stuff where it's like, okay, so one guy says the thing. At at some point, it comes up in somebody's uh, Google News alert, or it is a a press release that somebody put, put, puts out, and then that goes around the world. Flu Rona goes around the world. Delta Cron goes around the world. Like, uh, uh, it's just I don't know what it helps. I don't I don't know if anybody who tests positive for Delta Cron or flu or flu Rona is going to know the difference. I, I don't know. I mean, unless it's measurably more 
contagious or more deadly. I don't know why we need to hear about it. And, and yet like, here we are. Are, 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 are we literally at the point where it's like just n I, a reasonable person can throw their har arms up and say, yeah, there's no way to tell. I have no idea. No, it, I, I, can we go then back to that tweet for a second? Sure. Sure. Um, my my issue is that I'm not going to we have a tweet that says, OK, let's make this teachable. Moment. There's no such thing as Delta Cron, like there's no such thing as Florona. OK, uh, they did not form a super variant. I think that's very likely what they're saying is true, but that pointing out this didn't happen and this is probably this. I don't like that tone. I don't like the I'm telling you this isn't a real thing yeah, when the, the authoritarian take. Yeah, it bothers me because yeah. we've been getting those for two years and the number of times they've been proven false. The people I listen to is like, probably not true because those are the people who are like easier for them to go back and go, you know what? Now that I know, when you say, no, it's not this, then you put yourself in a corner where when you get other evidence, you don't want to go, oh, I uh, well, you don't want to say you're wrong. But if you go, I don't think it is. And then if you go, what about this? It's like, oh, now that I know that, yeah. And so I, I get bothered by those takes. Well, I mean, I think largely because it brings us closer to the idea of scientism instead of science, right? Yep. Like yep. scientism is a, is a religion and science is a pursuit, uh, a very messy, boring, long tailed pursuit for which uh, uh, can radically change courses when you are talking about the small sample sizes of an ongoing problem. And uh, I mean, I, ag I agree with you, Andrew. Um, and also I look at this case of, this Delta Cron thing or the Fluorona thing and think, well, like are if, if there are, uh, I don't, I don't, I, I, it's not like those news stories are catching on because they are the height of, of scientific, uh, um, I don't know, procedure Rigor. and cleanliness. Right. Um, and so I under I understand the, the desire to kind of slash through the noise with a I simpler, with a simpler message, which is, of, which is these things did not happen rather than these things probably cool. didn't maybe I, I, let me I'm, flash you back I'm, two years ago okay. oh, sorry uh, please, please. I, I mean i'm i'm I, no go ahead i'm done i didn't interrupt you bryce i'm sorry no i've finished speaking uh, um i flashed back two years ago and i write a letter to yahoo news science because they have an article uh this thing out of China is the, the flu is way more dangerous, and here's why. And it's only only this many cases are. And I'm like, hey, uh, I don't. I wrote the the, person, the science writer. I'm like, I don't know what to make of this, but you know, by your own data, you say the rate at which it spread. This sounds like a month from now, this is going to be a really huge problem. And it was a, hey, dummies, the flu is worse than this. And we got those two years ago. No, it's not a problem. Flu is worse. Flu kills more people than this this coronavirus has. You know, and then. There are a number of hot takes like that from the experts, and it's like, no, this, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, we don't have enough information, so you can say, based upon what we know, doesn't sound legit, and people are like, well, that sounds like a wishy-washy headline. Yeah, because you don't have facts. When you don't have the real data, you got to say that. Well, and that and that gets, you know, I think, uh, uh, Bryce, if I can... Uh, uh you know, interrogate your point a little bit, that part of it is uh, when you're in a health crisis, right? Like you do need more direct messaging. Uh, uh, and, and maybe these kinds of messages need to be heard by people uh, uh, louder and quicker. Um, and I think that there is a room for that. I, I just kind of wish that those messages were more about things that I think people really realistically uh, 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 affects them more than a existential threat like like uh, fluorona or 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 cron I'm, cron delta delta cron i'm fine for direct like if that person said hey there has been zero verif this is zero verification has happened elsewhere or whatever most likely then if they said specific state to the facts of this and you can make a very damning case but it's like i remember 20 years ago got a knew somebody who worked in the pentagon who leaned, uh, uh, was uh, Air Force, and, and then told me, you know, was very adamant about WMDs. Like, oh, no, pull, told me personally, like, oh, yeah, we have evidence of WMDs. It's there. I'm like, are you sure? Like, oh, yeah, we do. I'm like, well, this person, because they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of an outsider sort of person, their point of view in this. And I'm like, okay, cool. 
And then that sort of fell apart. And then 10 years later, this person was running for office and their thing was like, you know, they lied to you saying we had WMDs and we did it and da, 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 da. And I'm like, you told me you knew. You told me and now you're on the other side of this. And I'm like, who who do I believe? And that was one of my first experience of people like, oh yeah, no, we know. And I'm like, I don't know that anybody knows, you yeah. know? And 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 I like that uh, positioning of, of uh I, I, I'm always dubious when people call people liars because lying is a tricky and difficult business. It's much, much easier to just be wrong. And, mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of people who are wrong and every so often somebody has a wrong headline that the world is ready to hear and it spreads like wildfire and we get Delta Cron or whatever. And I, I catch myself doing this all the time where somebody will tell me something and somebody I think could be pretty credible and I'll repeat it to somebody else like, oh yeah, no, we know this, da, da, da. And I stop and I'm like, no, you don't know that. You, you yeah. believe that person who told you this and like, I'm, I'm guilty, super guilty of doing that all the time. Justin Robert Young said this and he's never wrong. True. He's, I mean, he's you know what else wrong. is never it's wrong? That, that uh, is true. Well, actually. the fact that truth is a malleable concept and an illusion we build up to keep ourselves asleep at night, but also that you can go to patreon.com slash weird things where you can support this very, very show. Look, and Andrew Main was babbling and shaking with COVID. Oh, barely staying alive. The only thing that, that kept his eyes alight was knowing that you, dear listener, were paying each and every week to get the Weird Things podcast in your life. If you become a patron, you also get the After Things podcast before anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Most importantly, though, like every so often in a fever dream, somebody will speak pure, lucid truth. And I remember hearing, mm -hmm. I might have dreamed this, but I remember hearing him say, the more they give, the truer it gets. Yes, that's and, true. And, and, and I believe that to this mm -hmm. day. Facts. Uh, find out for yourself, friends. <laughs> Hear the true voice of God <laughs> by giving us money at patreon.com slash weird things. Uh, donations may not in involve the true voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, Justin, Brian. Yeah, yeah, what's up, fam? Guys, what's you want, up? You want, you want to take an airplane trip? I'm going to put Let's you guys in an airplane. Let's go, man. If there's one thing that Brian and I are very scared of, it's airplane trips. So finally, we'll take our first one. All right. So you're in an airplane together. All right. Little little plane. Small plane, like a little prop plane or, or, or a little, little jet plane. plane? Little prop plane? Little puddle uh, jumper? Yeah, and, uh, and I hate to say it, you're having problems, engine problems. Uh-oh. Now, now, but, don't worry. I, I saw a Reddit video where somebody had the engine just go out. He just coasted on down. Ain't no big deal. I run to the back of the plane to balance it out. I don't know if that's true, but I'm just taking a guess. Yes. And you're able to buy precious seconds so Brian can land the plane. Good. Okay. Also, uh, cl clear my thoughts because, I mean... We were in the okay. middle of a podcast. We thought it'd be funny. Uh, podcast on a plane. Yeah, I want this podcast off this MF and plane. Mm -hmm. That was the whole conceit. I'm glad. But now, now we've but, landed. But now I'm focusing on landing hey, the plane. Cool. All right. The plane crashes. Oh, no. You're alive. A little disoriented. But you know what? The cops showed up. Uh, uh, can I look around and see where we are? Like, like could you describe? You're, you're in a plane crash. You're well, sort of at smoky whatever. No, I, I, I know, I know. But yeah, is it jungle but, 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 or like, city? Like, or no, rural? you're in the middle of a city. Middle of a city. Middle, middle of a city. Of a city. Uh, well, you well, found well, what color are the flashing lights? They're they're blue and red. You Good. found a place to land your plane. What and the cops are day and you year up. is it? <laughs> like literally yesterday. Okay. Um, I remember this now. Now that now okay. that we have a context, yeah. I do remember right. this. Good, yeah. good. Yes, yeah. I was. All right, let's go. And the cops pull you free. All right. Thanks, our men and women in blue. Yep. And you're like, Phew. ha ha. That was bad. that was about as worse as it could get. Who boy? Exactly. Uh, Brian, we did it. Um, high fives. You crashed a plane. Why am I high five again? Uh, uh, any crash you can walk away from, pretty rad. Yeah. Right? Hey, Bryce, sure. do you want to show them the video footage of their crash? Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's, 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 I was there, and I, I, got a, I got a shot of it. So yeah. just if you guys want to. It's a pretty good crash. Damn, Bryce. If, if I do Thanks, say so. Man. We don't actually have the link. Well, mm. uh, yes, here we go. 
We can't. Oh, there we go. There's your plane. There's your airplane. Um, you guys are out. Oh my God. And there's the train running right through your airplane that you landed on the train tracks. I, I, I think that's a violation of my rights as a plane lander. <laughs> Oof, 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 there were a lot of people on that track. Holy out of the crap. Way. Yeah, no, it is right there on the track. I'll tell you what, this is a gritty reboot of planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> and there is, there is, uh, there is like, Jesus. So yeah, the, the fuselage gets rammed by this, uh, uh, train and the person who is recording this oh on IG stories Bryce uh, me yeah Bryce, yeah, Bryce nearly Bryce gets hit there. I'm sending you a link Bryce of Whoa. body cam footage from the cops next to it uh, uh heroes all of them um so everybody is out of the plane. the plane everybody's out of the plane uh and now they're just watching to see what happens when a train runs over it or I well, guess they probably I mean, weren't focused on the train. I mean, but 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 you watch, would think that this. train people oh, yeah. and plane people talk, right? They're all like, uh, no, they've been bitter enemies for <laughs> centuries. Okay. <laughs> all right. Go, 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 go. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. No. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Okay. All right. They were literally dragging him away as it hit the plane. Oh my God. No word yet on the extent of his injuries or any injuries. Jeez. Oh, so number one, yeah. that dude landing on the, on, I mean, of all the places to land a plane on the train tracks, holy smokes. But number two, uh, uh, good on those cops, man. He pulled this yeah. guy out with seconds to spare. Yeah, dude. Holy. Plus uh, double props for the fact that it was Boba Fett from the book of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, terrifying, and, you know, we get a lot of headlines about cops. Every day, something to this danger or magnitude happens where was, was, these what, people are risking their lives to save somebody. Wasn't yeah. there a uh, children's book called uh, Unfortunately? <laughs> Like, and it was just a series of like, uh, unfortunately, you fell out of a plane. Fortunately, you had a parachute. Unfortunately, there was a <laughs> hole in it. Fortunately, uh, uh, Spider-Man uh, webbed it. it it's uh, uh, this is like a short version. This is the live action version of that. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, God, man, that that is that is harrowing. That was life and death within within seconds. I mean, jeez, uh, yeah. <laughs> A uh, uh, good. Uh, where was that, by the way? Do we do? We, can we shout out California? That was, that was in uh, like Bacoima or something. Yeah. Damn. So, so things that had to have happened. Dude successfully crash lands a plane. Uh probably doesn't have time to really think about uh, the wisdom of landing on train tracks. But 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 the cops get there very very quickly. I assume. To pull him out in time, like like like, I, I I would love to know like a second by second timeline. Because by the way, I would imagine if you crash a plane, you are not normally being ripped out by three people uh, as fast as possible. Considering you might have some kind of back injury or some kind of leg injury for which you you want to like stability and compression is is of 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 key. But you also don't want to get hit by a train, so they yank this dude out like he's a ragdoll. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, only one of them got out. It was the guy behind the yoke. Uh, not. Uh oh. Oh no! Not his co-pilot. Yeah. Oh, no. no, no. I walked out the back and went to the Jack in the Box on yeah. the corner. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> the I was getting those tiny tacos. That's so good. Nom, 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 You're nom, like, nom, nom, hey, what's going? Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> no hey, ticket. Hey, when are we gonna gas up the plate? I, I got some extra. T I guess they're mine now. Yeah. Uh, that is extraordinary. I, I mean, I mean, it's like heroes all around heroes to the guy, uh, because think about it. The guy could have derailed the train by yeah. by overcompensating, hitting the brake too hard. The cops could have overreacted and uh, done nothing uh, uh, or uh, but but luckily they got the guy out. Uh, Boba Fett escaped. Uh, it's amazing. And you think there's who knows how many? Well, it's a train, so probably 12 people on it. But yeah, people on board the train. What was that? Oh, we hit an airplane. Ah, ha, ha, ha. 
Like, you know, like <laughs> titter, shit, titter, titter just... as they go back to the dining car. <laughs> well, uh, we are going to have to delay the grand ball by 30 Maverick's minutes. Maverick's got his royal flush as he's about ready to win, you know. Oh, it's a steamboat. Next Sorry. up. Now we're coming up to the uh, submarine convention. Don't worry. I'm sure it can. <laughs> I mean, how many times? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, don't worry. We'll just have to get past the mole creatures digging machine convention. <laughs> you, I, like, I just imagine, like, in a cop movie where the, the chief is like, well, I'm reading your report here. All right, this is what I want. Uh, uh, Brian, you are the officer. Justin, you're the police chief. Yeah. And you just read, you know, Brian's got a history of being kind of sloppy with his reports. And you're reading a report mentioning planes and trains. <laughs> Look, I was yeah. more. Hold on, I was, hold on. I was I'm getting in. I'm getting into character. Usual. I'm getting into character. Hold on, hold on. Let I'm me getting... and let me just no, no, no. sign my yeah. name. Hand it over oh, here, so Brian. There you go. Uh, okay. okay. All right, Pulowski. <sighs> Yep. Yep. Oh, I just found out your name's not Pulowski. Yep. 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 So wait, hold on. You're 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 here to tell me. Yep. That there was a plane. Uh, th- yes. Landed on a train track. Uh, crash landed. Yep. Yep. Right on the train track. Well, I mean, uh, either either that or there was high traffic areas on either. The guy's really a hero if you think about it. He avoided all the the the, the auto pedestrian traffic. Managed to land. Just on the one strip that was open. Kind of like hitting the zero in roulette, huh? Uh, well, or the double zero or the triple zero. It, it, it was a very lucky thing. And even more lucky, me and my partner happened to be close enough that we were able to get him out what of the What were plane. you doing before then? Drinking. On the job? <laughs> yeah. Huh. And then what happened? Uh, 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 uh. We laughed, and then... uh, uh, Because of the drinking, not the crash. (laughs) Right. And then... uh, What did you do when the crash happened? uh, Well, uh, then Samson says, uh, I think there's about to be a crash. He thinks before the before it crash lands. Correct. No, he had a well, premonition. Sorry. No, no, you no. don't have anything about no, no, no. psychics in this, after, Pulowski. After the crash, uh, my partner, Samson, uh, uh, said, I think there's going to be another crash. Okay. And so I, he had a premonition about the train. Correct. Yes. And Because um, did, did he know the train timetable? Uh, well, he didn't. Is he but just guessing because he was drunk? He claims that he just gets the, the, the shine from time to time. I looked over and saw a train directly headed towards the plane. And I thought we should get uh, whatever living beings are in that plane out of the plane. Smart because, thinking. Because also, uh, I, I don't know if it's in my report, the train honked a lot, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is train talk for we do not intend to stop. Mm, Sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, as a veteran, I'm here to tell you, <sighs> they do that. Uh, they, they, they honk they, a lot. They, <laughs> they do honk a lot. When yes. they're coming towards you. <laughs> yes. Yes. So about my reassignment. Denied. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I this just... is the first act. <laughs> you're going to win me over in the third act. <laughs> Denied. Just... And you're fired. You're yeah. on suspension. <laughs> you're a loose cannon. <laughs> I know, like the cost. You know, I like the, when they always talk about, like, you know how much it costs the patrol car? And it's like an airplane, and now they got, like, the train and yeah, everything exactly. else. That... That dirty Brian. I've got, I've got, I've got the mayor. I've got the <laughs> FAA. I've got Amtrak so far up my butt they can see out my armpits. Also, do you know who was in that train? The FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I can't deal with all these MF yeah. and FAs in my A. I need your badge and gun and pilot's license on my <laughs> desk immediately. And give me those tiny tacos. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, uh, I'm going to assign you to the case of who did the COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's it. You're, re- you're reassigned. Johnson, you're on the first trip to Wuhan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop 4. So, uh, 
Elon Musk. Uh, I don't know if you heard of him, but he's kind of a you know, entrepreneur, a creator, yeah. and inventor guy. He is. True. I, I know he, him more as the man of the year, but that was yeah, last he, year. Yeah, he built a fairly built a thing called a Starlink. I guess this is called, yep. and it's uh, involving uh, talking to stars or something. Yeah, with uh, internet, satellite, satellite, did, satellite yeah. internet. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, world's richest man, as you know, Tesla. All this, right? Genius, right? Oh no, no, because apparently he didn't think of a fatal flaw with the Starlink. There's some Starlink users reporting a problem. They're not getting service on cold days. Wow, this is bad too. You can see it. You can see the problem. Yeah, it's a really, it's a big flaw. It's a big. There it turns out there's a design flaw in the Starlink satellite uh, dish. Yeah, I, I'm hearing words like flaws and my boy, and I'm not. Those don't go together. All right, so here, hold on. So, Sorry, so, Brian. Your hero is made of paper. Um, yeah, I mean, they maybe throws into question everything else he's done, all of his incredible other amazing achievements yep. and the magical Model Y that I drive around every day. I'm having my doubts because apparently he didn't think of everything. So wait, hold on. This is, this is in the satellite that you would uh, uh, affix to your house if you were getting right. the internet? Okay. Oh, the, right. the, no, the, the dish. The, the dish. The dish. Yeah. The dish. Yeah. All right. these, these geniuses thought they thought of everything. Yeah. And apparently these, when it gets cold. Because these are things that have been around for a while, like like micro satellite dishes. They're, they're direct TV and everything. Like like they've they've been. Well, some, uh, yeah. Sometimes they collect snow, and apparently that the dish has a certain kind of a heating amount to it, which heats can help melt the snow, which okay. is cool, right? Great. No, wrong, wrong. No. Bryce, show them the problem with the Starlink. Dish. Oh no! <laughs> oh, Starlink. And it's cat problem. It's we a, were talking about wine crimes. Now we got now we got cat tatra species. So <laughs> you don't need to change what the you're seeing. <laughs> describe what you're seeing. So there is a Starlink satellite. There's snow all around dish. it. But uh, uh, yeah, the Starlink yeah. dish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's like mounted collection. to the ground. To the ground. Yeah. Or like it's it's roof. land based. By yeah. the way, oh, by the the way roof? this uh, this yeah. is when when you roll like a natural twenty on charisma. Like this is the type of problem you have as an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> like, so so just for uh, for audio listeners, what we are looking at is anywhere between four and five cats. I think there's five. It's, it's a cat five. Yeah. Operation. Cat five <laughs> problem. <laughs> That are all in this, and and I presume that that would deter the internet from getting to the dish. So yes, because the dish is warm, it's a snowy roof. Five cats decided to sit on top of the Starlink antenna. <laughs> and, uh, and some he imagine should, uh, like, he should definitely sell like just like a a, a a big piece of rope and call it the Cat Five cable. And then the job is when the cats collect on your, on your thing, you just sort of flip it up there, like, get out of there, kitty cat. I just, somebody's sitting there going, ah, the star, I, I was getting, I was playing my game and it was great. My, I'm on the Netflix, like, what the, do you have any lot? Like, go look at the roof. Like, I don't, let me go check the, t oh, what the? <laughs> And there's so, just five cats chilling out. So we're looking here that apparently also it attracts some birds. Birds also enjoy the heated uh, the heated perch, which nah. as somebody who has birds, birds love the heated perch that we have in their cage. I would not I would not doubt that wild birds also like it. I see. This is why you're more technologically savvy. To me, I thought somebody was getting ready to, to send a tweet. Stop it. You should. You're ejected. I wish I had an ejector seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, so, uh, apparently that user says that uh, the cats interrupted the streaming of movies, but it didn't shut it down completely. Oh, look at that! But it did slow everything down. Mm. The cats have cancer now. <laughs> doesn't? It's totally from way. Uh, like, does anybody happen, have any but... picks? No, that's the perfect thing to go after. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we do picks, I, I actually would. I've been obsessed with. Uh, uh, the fingers crossed uh, enthusiasm for the James Webb uh, Space Telescope. The Weber. Uh, apparently, yeah. we are at the point that we can breathe easy, that everything is... Uh, Unfolded. Uh, uh, I, I think there's one more panel to unfold, and that's about that. Yeah, great for bringing that up. Uh, the James Webb Space Telescope has been one of these, on the NASA list of things to get done, has been around forever. This thing was supposed to have launched over 10 years ago. It's ended up costing way, way, way more than we expected to. But the science we'll get from it is going to be pretty awesome. 
Part of it is it's a humongous ass mirror. That's a scientific term for everybody. That's going to look at space. And to, in order to do this, they want to be able to block all of the light from, let's say, the sun. So they have this big sun shield, which unfurls around it. So you're not getting any sun rays going into it or whatever affecting it, which is really, really cool because they want to have it be able to pick up you know, finite details, you know, so well, exciting. And and, and uh, it, it got even a little bit more bonkers as I read up on it because uh, it's at Lagrange Point 2, which is the side opposite of, like, basically they've parked it in the Earth's shadow. So the Earth is blocking the sun most of the time. But even then, the rest of all that reflected heat is too much for it. So it's just like uh, let's have uh, five layers of separated foil to to make it uh, very very cold so that we can actually see infrared. It's insane, and what we're going to be able to see with this, we have no. I mean, it, it, it's it's we're going to see more stunning images of the universe around us. We're going to find out more mysteries, and really for content for our show, it's great. yeah. And like that is, you look at that thing and you look like, oh, is that done for like, no, that is the unfurled thing. As Brian pointed out, it's got like this five layers of, you know, to slow down all the the heat, and the rays the going towards it. Kind of like a big heat sink in a sense. Dude. So. Yeah. It's exciting. I'm stoked. Well, stoked. Updates, Can't wait for, to updates see them will picks. continue. Webbing it. Webinar. All right, uh, uh, guys. I have I have a pick. I would like to discuss this pick with you guys because I feel like uh, 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 it, it's worthy of discussion, and that is the book of Borba Fett on Disney Plus, a spinoff series of The Mandalorian. Andrew, have you watched the book of Boba Fett? No, no, I've not. You've not. No. Okay. Well. Then we will then we'll keep this between the three of us. Do you do you care for spoilers uh on 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 the book of Boba Fett? I'm kind of looking forward to it. I could recuse myself for a couple minutes if then you like. We don't need to discuss it at all. Uh it's interesting. I'm curious to see everybody's thoughts about it. What's your overall take on it? Positive, negative, meh? Uh episode two was much, much better than episode one. Uh, and and yet <laughs> curious decisions. It is, it is, it is an interesting show. Uh, here's all I'll say about the pilot. And Andrew, I know that you will appreciate this. It's directed by Robert Rodriguez for whom I wonder if in his contracts, he's like, Hey, so what's the budget for this? And they're like, Oh, it's about a million and a half. And he's like, cool. And I could spend so if, as much or as little of that as I want. Sure. Okay. If you wanted yeah, to I, take my joke. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I just want to make it clear. Yeah. Well, that was my take on the the episode of Mandalorian. Like I love I Rod Rodriguez is a hero. He's, mine, he's a god. He is a movie making he, god. god. Yeah. But I was like, after watching that, I'm like, man, he can make he, you know, he can he can make, you know, seven thousand look like seven million and he can make seven million look like seven thousand. Yeah. I, I think that there is some parts of that where he is um he is uh, uh, a bit of a liability compared to the production value that goes into or is on the screen in episode two. But even episode two, man, uh, uh, <clears throat> boy, uh, uh, just I, I, I don't know whether or not some of the decisions make me love the show or uh, uh, make me lose faith in it. But, but I presume yeah. I, will, I, will, I will harden my, my, my resolve the further we go. Into it. Yeah, I I was when the Mandalorian one was like their point. I didn't know who directed the episode, but I'm like, man, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at like some wide angle lens flares here that I shouldn't be seeing at a nose. And man, I'm watching the same stormtroopers get killed over and over again. This feels like a Robert Rodriguez movie, you know, and, and mm. not not the parts that I love about Rodriguez. <laughs> you know, the things that I go, ah, okay, that's those are your lens flares, like Abrams. I get it. And then I go like, oh, Rodriguez. I'm like, well. I don't know that I should. I shouldn't have picked up on that for those reasons. Yeah, uh, uh, but there we go. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm curious about it. Uh, you know, I, I think the only thing I would say is is that uh, we're moving into a pretty rich television season. So uh, I hope it steps it up, or else it might fall off the old schedule. Yeah, I I'll hold off on thoughts. Um, but but I will say that I went on a cultural field trip. I journeyed all the way back to, I believe the year was 2006, and uh, rented Jackass Number 2. 
And uh, wow, I remember watching that movie in the theater and laughing so hard I cried uh, and thinking this is a very good, entertaining movie. That's it. Brian, are you are you getting old? Well, you, if I, it's I, too I, loud, you're too old, Grandpa. Here's what I genuinely don't know is how much have I changed versus how much has the world changed? Because there are mm. things in there that were like, yep, that's sexual assault. Um, okay. And then, you know, it's uh, 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 couldn't do that anymore. And also... Uh, these actors are are young and feel invulnerable. And then meanwhile, I, I now have developed production vision where I can see just how irresponsible so many of the shoots are. And uh, uh, now having said all of that, I, I spent a lot less time laughing. But uh, when I did laugh, it was a total surprise uh, about one third of the time. It was it was it was like, holy cow. And yeah. That's it. I now I, I hear where you come. Like I don't, I don't like like if somebody's like, oh, watch this movie, video of somebody falling down. Like I'm not gonna laugh. I'm like I feel bad for the person. Like I'm very I have empathy. Like that that stuff just doesn't you know. Like oh, look at this take of this person trip. I'm like I don't, I don't misery of other people. Jackass was always different because it was like, hey, hey, you're volunteering for it. They're doing it. And they're getting it. What they're getting what they asked for. And that was sort of fine. But I remember like sometimes you'd see sometimes like where you'd be like, man, is that is that crossing the line with like spectators or stuff or whatever? But yeah, I'd be curious to see that, too, because I know that I've never liked anything that was cruel towards people who weren't invited themselves. But I also wonder if I'm really going to just watching somebody get punched in the balls. Does it bring as much joy to me as it does before? Uh, yeah, I, I learned a bit about myself watching it. Also, uh, some 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 of those folks are dead now. And that changes things because of their uh outsized lifestyle yeah 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 jackass uh, wait is it four coming out soon yeah 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 jackass four they're all back together yeah apparently and there was uh bam margera oh, is not uh, uh the rumor is that bam is not allowed no, that's not a rumor set. that's not a rumor no he was he is not going to be in the movie because, because. It, it was a clean set uh, many of them have gotten sober and so they they required a clean set and uh bam margera was not uh willing to do it although i think he has another version of that story so yes yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's interesting to see them kind of evolve. Like if you look at it now, I mean, if you were going to do the highfalutin ivory tower take, you know, like jackass was truly the clowns of their age, you know, much as uh, medieval clowns, you know, like fell down for the amusement of the populace. So do, uh, uh, you know, all these uh, people. 2006, there were two things that three things that were very true. One. Iraq definitely had weapons of mass destruction. Two, the subprime mortgage lending would never, never fail. be a problem. And three, uh, uh, jackasses. They would jackass. Yeah. I The thing that kind of, in the movies I'd find, but there were points where you'd watch and you could tell they were CG. Remember there was a couple points like bees and other stuff where you're like, yeah, no, that's completely fake. And you know, there was like the, the fishing for sharks thing. Like, this is not... I don't think this happened the way this they're showing this. Yeah. And it was kind of like, like, eh, like, and I get production and stuff, but I remember points like this, like, this is a little, I mean, like, then you're like, well, what else isn't what I thought it was? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got a pick. This is a, this a, just a quick pick. Um, uh, they, they've got a, the, on the, on the PlayStation, they give, they get, they give you free games every month. And one of them right now is dirt five. And, uh, that's a, that's a cool little game. Uh, get some cars, get them a little dirty. Uh, do a little rally, do some other stuff. It's it's fine. It's a it's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, this is how I want I all my video clip game that reviews. out. Somebody clip that out and tweet it to me. Just <laughs> say, it's, it's fine. Car. It's fine. I like it. You, you know got what? a little dirty. You got you got defensive on the second fine. <laughs> You got like, like you said it's fine, and then heard a voice in your head saying, oh. "Is it?" And you're like, "It's fine, it's fine." Uh, 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 
I've been looking for kind of a more casual racing game, and Dirt 5 seems to be just friendly enough. The other racing games were too much of a commitment. A little, like, they wanted to rush into things a little bit. You needed some casual racing. There's, there's some Fast behind, racing, there are some for example. Four or five hundred dollar racing wheels that I'm looking at. But uh, no, I'm, I, it's, and it's, it's part of the PlayStation Plus thing, so everybody's going to get it for free anyway. But uh, I, I actually dig it, and I say uh, give it a try if you uh, if you're not into racing stuff because with the with the rally stuff it's a little more it's not as precise you get a little more wiggle room so there we go andrew you got a pick my pick is i watched this the other night and i'm like i'll just watch a couple minutes and watch a couple more minutes and i'm like wow i just watched the whole thing and that is the val kilmer documentary Mm. val val kilmer has yeah he's had video he's been making videos since uh he was a kid and he's documented a tremendous amount of his life and Val Kilmer has gone through, you know, he's always one of those interesting actors who you, everybody, you kind of like Val Kilmer as a great actor. You know, he was always a very oddball and you hear the word sort of difficult or whatever. And he has dealt with, he had like throat cancer. And so when he's in this documentary and you'll hear him speak and he has to basically plug the hole in his throat, be able to talk. And then part of the documentary is he has his son do his voiceover for him to explain things. And it's a very interesting sort of who is this guy? Who is this in his own words and seeing who he is? I thought it was I was riveted. I was very fascinated by it. And uh, and it's rough because you see a guy who, you know, is one of the top stars in the world. And then, you know, part of he does now is they show him where he goes around to do the, you know, do the photos and signing autographs sort of thing. And he talks about how he makes a comment, says like, you know, like he says it should be humiliating. They have to do this. But he goes, but it's humbling to see all these people show up and see me. And there's like a screening they do of Tombstone. It's some old West you know, ranch where there's tons of people there to go see it and stuff. And you see that people have a love and respect for him. And so I, I thought it was fascinating. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, you know, you just you go like, wow, what a what amazing career this guy's had and uh, complicated. I've heard uh, very, very good things about it. And and whenever we talk about our kind of modern media landscape, and it is certainly a seller's market, like, because there are so many outlets that want stuff like this, uh, I think I, I, I would point to stuff like this as something that I don't know if 10, 15 years ago, it would survive in the kind of way that that this does, like that that it is picked up, that it gets a little bit of a push, uh, and that it just is so readily accessible that at at any moment, you know, people can kind of discover it and everything. So I'm I'm very very glad that this exists. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. So I I I would just tell people if you're like on the fence, just watch the first ten minutes, and you'll probably it's on it's on uh, Amazon Prime. And I'm like, I'll give it ten minutes, and I was hooked, pulled in, and behind the scenes videos of like, you know, Island of Doctor Moreau with with Marlon oh, Brando, wow. you know. And or recording the, the camera, the same one on set. And when you hear, yeah, you're recording the camera and arguing with John Frankenheimer, you know, that's in there. Some behind the scenes stuff with Top Gun and some other stuff. And just, just, you know, the trailer, they show a lot of the other celebrities and other celebrities in there, but really you just, you just kind of go like, he is a character. Yeah. He is definitely a character. Oh, real wackadoodle. Nice. I mean, literally a live machine gun. He, he used a live machine gun to create an audition tape for uh uh full metal jacket you know he oh, wanted a Jesus. part in that and you see him making this video and then like running around the machine gun, <laughs> like holy cow wow, wow. very serious actor mm. uh anyhow gentlemen it's been weird yeah. watch out for the train ah i saw the whole thing on the james webb telescope just get the cats off it Get out, kitty cat. All righty. All righty. There you go, everybody. Let's get the cat See ya. off the That's damn a... telescope. Uh, oh, you know what today is? What? The te- January 10th. Mm-hmm. One ten twenty two. Yeah. What's that? It's a day that we can see a full trailer of a thing. We know we can see the full thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Everything else was a teaser, and then it said the full trailer. Wait, are we talking about the same thing? Uh, let me search. Oh, okay. <laughs> are we uh, talking this, about our friend? Yes. Who has a, an, an ad that's going to air in many markets? Yes. Yeah. 
I would encourage everybody, to, uh, especially if you live in the southeastern portion of the United <laughs> States, to watch the college football championship tonight. Uh, it would be very, you know, especially for a lot of you guys that root for either Alabama or Georgia. It's going to be an important and fun game to watch anyway. But you may or may not see uh, uh, a little ad from some friends of the show. Yeah. That's all I'll say. I think it's the only thing now we're allowed I to say. No, I can't say the other thing that. Uh, there's an ad. Anyway, there's a guy on a thing. There's a guy and he's doing a thing. <laughs> and he's and, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. uh, uh Andrew, do, do you have a do you have an out today? Do you need to be gone no, in I've 15? Got a, I'm open till I'm two. I'm actually good. Oh. Damn. Okay. Great. 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 Damn. Uh. Awesome. Up. 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 Did I have an after things email? I don't remember seeing one. Boop, boop, boop. Uh. Okay. Um, all right, well, uh, uh well, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, from here. I'll be right back. Too. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, Justin, did you? Uh, 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 Justin. Yeah. Hey, what's up, uh, Big B? BC. The f I, did you? Did you? The last night. Did you watch the the game? Did you watch the football game? Uh, uh, I watched the very beginning. Uh, as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, I was very specifically rooting for them to not tie. Okay. Uh, the Congrats. Chargers then went uh, uh, improbably, converting, I think five. Four five for seven on fourth down, uh, uh, and 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 I think four of them came on the final drive. Uh, they scored to tie it, sending it to overtime. For which I was like, "You want to know what? I'm just going to sleep. Like, <laughs> like either I'm going to be really annoyed or I'm going to be very happy when I wake up. But I, I'm I'm not watching the stupid game. It's just very frustrating. I'm glad that I did because it only got more frustrating as both teams kicked. <laughs> Uh, uh, field goals, field goals in which, overtime. And by the way, for those who are unaware, since this is sports talk radio now, uh, <laughs> if the Raiders and the Chargers tied, then they both would have gone to the playoffs, right? And then whoever else won, uh, whoever won, if if they if one team won and one team lost, then uh, uh, only one of them would go to the playoffs. And so they, uh, uh, and so it I, looked I, I, like I, I still don't know how the game ended for the record. I, I just know that they yeah. both kicked so they field both, goals. They both kicked field goals yeah. in overtime. It goes back to the Steelers. There's no, like to the Chargers. The Steelers were not playing. Or yeah, no, sorry. Um yeah. but no, it goes back to the Raiders. The Raiders. Um there's like four minutes left on the clock or something. Um and the, the Chargers still had their timeouts, and for whatever reason, they kept calling timeouts instead of letting the clock run out when gotcha. they would have uh, tied. Both gone to, to a tie, yeah. Right. Um, like, two seconds left, and they called a timeout. And then that eventually, uh, whether that gave the, the Raiders the push that they needed or what, but they ended up, uh, kick, they ended kicking, up a field goal kicking another win. field goal in overtime to win. Uh yeah, and so the Chargers are out. Chargers are your team because Justin Herbert's Justin the quarterback. Herbert. Yeah. And you know what? A good year, a, f a, a fine year, but just a tough way to end that season. What do you think of the coach? The coach has been uh, uh, the subject of some uh, uh, consternation because he is uh, inconsistent, I guess, on when he goes for it on fourth down. I like that he does go for it on fourth down more. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pro go for it. Um, there's a great John Boy's video about about teams that don't go for it when yeah. they definitely should. Um, but I think I think he's doing an okay job. I think he's doing all right. Um, yeah, I, I actually think that um, they uh, the AFC North, which is where the division the Steelers are in, and the AFC West played each other this year, and both divisions were good. Mm. So I think that all those teams in that in both divisions were, were pretty like great. Like yeah. there was not really a, 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 a crap team amongst the eight and, and they really, really beat up on each other. Uh, 
So I think that, you know, in a perfect world, the Chargers should be in, in the playoffs, but they're not. The crappy Steelers are, and, and they suck, <laughs> but I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, uh, one last ride into the sunset for Ben Roethlisberger before I never have to have a conversation about consent that involves my quarterback. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. I'm very excited. Uh, Look, yeah. I, I, I will be less excited when we get another quarterback that's not as good as him. <laughs> but uh, uh, for now, I'm just very excited to not have to have a complicated and serious conversation whenever I bring up the fact that I like my quarterback. Yeah. Uh, do you need to take a break, Justin? No. Iron Man. I think I can hold it until the end of the show. All ready. Do we want to do some after things? What's after? Ready. All right, Andrew. I'll count you in. And uh, here we go. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, Mr. Brian Brushwood. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, yes. Sorry, I'm reading my teleprompter. I'm reading it here. No. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And. Bryce Castillo. Good to see you, Bryce. Thank you for having me on your program. <laughs> hey, boop. I'm very glad I you love do this. Programs. ended up doing robot voice instead of <laughs> the other thing I was going to do. Well, you see, this is what happens, Bryce, when I get <laughs> introed in the middle of eating my granola bar. Mm. Uh-oh. You should have just said no. I would have waited a minute. Yeah, he did ask you no, if you I'm were ready. professional, Bryce. I don't bring my petty this problems on air in this front of everybody yeah. else. Yeah, that's this is a this. What, remember, when, remember when Walter Cronkite started yelling at his line producer for beginning while he was eating his porridge? Wait a few minutes. Oh, I, I'm trying to eat this porridge, Doug. I'm t- I'm, I'm, I'm like, not going to bring I'm my like, petty things on air. What does that mean to play us out? Mur- <laughs> Then, uh, then, then, yeah, we'll just go back to talking about more football. The Chargers, you know, I think wait, that what happened. Are we, wait, are we still doing the show? What's up? Oh, I don't hear Andrew anymore. Uh oh. Maybe he doesn't hear. Did us. we drop us off? Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up or not. Yeah. I oh, now I can hear you. Yeah. Skype. Great Skype stuff. Is there a. Oh, did the batteries run out? Hello? Hello? I'm huh? here. Hold on. I had a weird audio thing. Oh, okay. Hmm. Know where it's, from. it's probably just my voice. I think they weren't ready. I think I, I think it was I my Cronkite impression. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. And he's like, damn, is that Walter it, Cronkite? It literally, I started. It went, I got went one ear to go. Hmm. <laughs> I'll get that a little bit on my on? AirPods, but not, yeah, not, not. Hey, oh. um, okay. Well, how, how, how's your bar? Is your bar done? Did you want to start again? I'm going to put it aside. I'm a professional. Person. Barred up. <laughs> barred down, rather. Put it barred, barred all over town. <laughs> all right, uh, why don't I count you in and we'll just start again. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. This is gold, though. I think we should leave it in. <laughs> I think the people want this. The yeah, Patreons want... They, they, Screw they, it. Let's they, not count it in. We're right. starting... We're already going. Yeah, this but, is the first few minutes. We should count it in, but leave everything that happened before Let's then. Let's just all count together. All right? Three, Three two, two, one. one. And... Oh, yeah, he slapped... Okay. He, he has another sister. snack? <laughs> he has snack. another what? snack. Now he's Slapping got a the Slim Jim. gym. <sighs> There's so many uh, snacks. He's going to the Sim Gym. <laughs> that's, that's where you watch. Oh, it's the chef's cut. <clears throat> oh, wow. Did Gordon Ramsay oh, come he's, cho- oh, he's choking yeah. on oh, the yeah, chef's yeah, cut. Oh, <laughs> yes, he's coming. Choking he's on drinking the chef's water. cut. He's like this a former great. president of the United States, man. Yeah, we should leave this in now that I This is now being left in for sure. Oh, my God. If he has another snack, I swear to God. He brings up those crinkly sun chips. <laughs> yeah. He, like, Big he bag take, of Doritos. He, take, he takes a full a full cake, cuts out one slice, and eats the rest of the cake. Unfoiling a <laughs> hot baked potato. <laughs> I was way back in the day uh, when I was doing a, the magic radio show, and my buddy uh, Jeff Ruttenberg, a great magician, really talented guy, he was my co-host on this, and Jeff, I, Jeff says, I said, yeah, we're going to record an episode, like the first episode we're going to record. And he's like, oh, what should I bring? I'm like, oh, you know... Uh, Potato chips in aluminum bags, all anything, you know, radio food, you know. <laughs> he shows up with no potato way. chips and all the things. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jeff, what do all these things have in common? They all make noise. You said radio food. I'm like, yeah, I'm at like quiet stuff. Yeah. Live crickets. He brings this. 
<laughs> he brings in fajitas. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> Sizzling. <laughs> <bossy girl. laughs> what kind of fajitas are you eating? <laughs> they're they're, they're loud demonic, but they're loud demonic loud. fajitas. <laughs> <They> <laughs> That's how you know. Kill them all, Bryce. Kill them all. Look. <laughs> it's good. It's good food. Send them to us. It's good mood food. Good mood food. Uh, hey, so, man, what's up with uh, work? <laughs> the so work I got a topic of creative for you. professionals. Yes, what's up, Andrew? Justin and I have been running the Magic News blog iTrix mm -hmm. for... Fifth, is this now 15 years? Would it be the 15th year Good that this thing... Good gracious. Holy yeah, cow, yeah, probably. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we... Uh, uh, for the last several years, Michael Locke, Locke has been running it for us, and Michael's been fantastic, and, and he's now moving more into writing in his own novels, and congratulations to Michael on that. And we're at the point, like, trying to figure out, what do we do next? Yeah. What do we do with this? We have iTrix. We have a pretty good, you know, there's, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but a lot of people use it for magic news and stuff. And, you know, Justin's, you know, moved on to politics and podcasting I, I, I had chart to move, topping hits I, I had to move to a field that had less drama so i went from <laughs> magic to politics let me ask you since you did that uh have you been threatened with lawsuits more or less times now <laughs> far less <laughs> I have, I have, I have far less had people call me and uh, either threaten physical or legal action against me since I moved into only talking about the fate of the free world as opposed to, you know, Las Vegas shows and uh, 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 various different magic things. I was doing. I had to go pull up a password. I did a search, and all of a sudden, I found like some email from like years ago, and it's like. You're gonna get sued. You know, was somebody upset because of some item that we'd link to or whatever, and you know, and then, then uh, won't name names, but you know, one of our favorite magicians who's not it, it literally, it's not David Copperfield. Be very clear on that. It's not David Blaine. No, but like, <laughs> so we're narrowing it down. One that called them up and says, like, I'm doing you guys a favor. One of their people is called. I'm gonna do you guys a favor, but you're gonna get sued unless you change this. And we're like, you know, that's a threat. No, yeah. no, I'm not threatening you. Yeah. I'm telling you. Like, I'm no, you're setting delivering up a, message. a set of if-then circumstances, one of From which will result in yeah. you being yeah. sued, the other and, of which you're a cool guy. And the person who did that was well-intentioned, and we liked the person, but yeah. it was such a funny thing. Like, no, you are actually the person delivering the threat. You are yeah. the person telling us if we don't do the thing. Well, no, I'm trying to stop you from, like, you're telling us if we don't do this, your employer's going to was just this there is, uh, uh, I, I forget, I think, Andrew, you're the person that I heard it from. I forget where it originates, but uh, uh, the smaller the pie, the sharper the knives. And uh, uh, that, that was is, a Henry Kissinger. There Henry we go. Kissinger, yeah. So, yeah, that is that is something that I very, very, very much understood uh, uh, throughout my my tenure with with with, with iTricks, which, uh, uh, you know, was was certainly eye opening to, to go from tangentially interested in magic as an art form to uh somebody that you know was was all of a sudden a, a person of interest with uh, uh magicians big and small and including really what what's what's fascinating about itrix and the, the experience of it is that a lot of the kids that were reading itrix are now like real players in in in, in the world of magic real uh, criminals in yeah, jail yeah. in jail uh but but yeah now you know it's it's um you know, uh, uh, I guess we could we could probably help uh, understand the future of iTrix by understanding the past. Uh, the original idea with it was you just wanting a place where you could help. Uh, 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 you know, you understood that there was a need for a a place where you could advertise your products. I had a experience in blogging and and journalism, and it seemed like the right thing to do. Yeah, it was. The motivations were, there were only like, there were three magazines where you could advertise magic in, and there was a lot of overlap between readers. And trying to, in one one, the kind of the bigger magazine, to get an ad, you had to place an ad like four months out or something, and they would, they were like, hey, we're out of ad space, sorry, sucks for you. And it was hard, and it was hard to plan around that. And also, sometimes you would get a good return, sometimes not. And I was like, you know, for what I would spend per month on advertising, what if I just paid for blog a blogger to 
do a magic news blog site. And then, and then maybe I could, then I could use the banners to advertise my stuff. Um, never editorial, never mention, never go into products, never promote, put my own products out there in the editorial, which was funny because uh, one, other people saw, a lot of people who saw iTricks had no idea that that I was the the producer of this because it wasn't promoting me. Yeah. It wasn't there like out there doing it. And that was, you know, to, to the strength of bringing in somebody like Justin, who's got strong, you know, integrity about that. Um, and, you know, a funny thing too was like, if we, we would, when we did product reviews, you know, our policy would be like, you'd have to return the product or whatever like this. Cause we get people like, and that was confusing. Cause in magic, nobody ever did that magic. People who reviewed stuff for magic magazines would keep it and later on sell it and stuff, which was unethical. Um, and we're this tiny little blog, but was trying to do things as ethically as we could. Uh, it was a very, but you know, yeah, it worked out well. Cause then I could advertise my stuff. Then we were able to sell out in, the, in our peak years, we were doing really good ad revenue with mm -hmm. it. And it was a neat, you know, a neat thing, but that's one of these things you could take an opportunity. You could take a problem, turn it into an opportunity. The problem, uh, I can't, you know, hard to get advertising, hard to advertise a magic product in a magic magazine. What's the solution? Take that money and spend it on another, create a new platform for advertising. Yeah. Which we did. Yeah, uh, and and it, it went really well. I mean, look, uh, uh, iTrix is the reason why I know Brian. Uh, yep. uh, I I remember very well. I was uh, in in my kitchen with uh, my 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 then roommate uh, uh, Chris Burney, and he was a big fan of Dignation. And uh, he was like, "Hey, man, he has he has a very sedate way of of, of talking." And he's like, "There's a magic thing on Revision 3. And I was like, oh, really? And immediately I was just like, well, cool. There's one of my four posts uh, <laughs> done for the day. Yeah. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, uh, but yeah, that was that was the first uh, the first time that I ever uh, talked to Brian. And as it turned out, the value of iTrix being a magic blog was almost immediately uh, 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 apparent, right? Oh, because well, of the whole uh, uh, Garcia thing. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I was about to say, like, uh, uh, it, it ended up being uh, more than just one of your four posts for the day, because immediately a controversy <laughs> erupted, and then it's like you got to do the follow up of of uh, uh, again my favorite phrase. They are both king uh, viceroys in the kingdom of awesome. So yeah, the 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 controversy was that was it the first episode of Scam yeah. School ever? So yeah. the first episode of Scam School ever has Brian teaching a trick. That trick was commercially available uh, at the time uh, by Danny Garcia, who is a friend of yours. Right. And there was message board uh, the, uh, static about, oh, my God, this guy just gave away this thing that is available uh, uh, you know, for cost. Uh, what a scumbag. He's ripping this thing off. So people are sending me stuff because I am. Again, the nexus of all drama where, you know, uh, all of a sudden it's in the comments. People are sending it to me. Uh, and I did a thing that I don't know if Beyond iTrix has maybe ever been done in, in, in the, the world of in magic. the world of magic yeah. uh, or magic quote unquote journalism, which is I emailed the sources that were involved in the story and said, hey, guys, what's up with this? Because I had a relationship with Danny. With Danny. I, I had uh, just met you or i had just written about you and so i was like hey i'll just do what a reporter does and ask for comment uh and sure enough it was a very simple story both sources confirmed it that it's like oh no brian taught that to danny and and it's like a hundred year old trick yeah <laughs> and 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 danny made a very good presentation for it which uh, for which he deserves to be compensated and end of Story. Also, I think for the if, if now that we're talking about it, if memory serves correctly, it might have also not even been available by the time that uh, that, oh. that that had happened, mostly because, because while, got... while it is a harmless trick, right. there are some trace elements of maybe children should not be doing this for which the, 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 the place that was selling it was certainly at a very younger demo as magic tricks tend to have. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, no, that was a. Uh, uh, you know, I think it was it was a real perfect melding of like Andrew's uh, uh, need as as a creator to be like, hey, I would like a place where it's easy uh, and and develops a bit of a younger crowd uh, on a site that looks good. It was you know certainly the uh, uh, maybe the the peak of 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 the blogging revolution uh, as where where a lot of the money and certainly the beginning of the podcasting uh, boom as as we know it now uh but 
Yeah, I guess so. So if we're going to look at it from from that idea where it started, uh, now where where does it where does it go? Now that now that yeah. Michael Locke is is uh, uh, moved on to greener pastures, do we advertise for somebody else to write it? Is is uh, 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 the the market need for a a magic blog what it once was? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's and I will just to sort of kind of tout what we we did there too is the way we handled it editorial wise. <clears throat> we are there are some people in magic who are super cool. There are some people who maybe don't know how to interact with other people or mm -hmm. whatever. And there are some people who can be. You wouldn't know who we hated. I don't no. we hate anybody, but who we thought were like just not Difficult. not nice people. Yeah, you wouldn't know you wouldn't know that by reading it because we never we never had an axe to grind. And there were some people that really frustrated us, but we never used eye tricks to take that out. You would never and like I said, there were people who had I had issues with or had been, you know, mean to me or whatever, and you would never know whether well, coverage was always fair, was always this, because it was just that was the right thing. And then, you know, and also you know, we had a couple times where people were like upset because, you know, they didn't like they thought we're the tiny little blog and we had people like threaten, oh, we're going to sue you over something. And we were uh, our attitude was like, you know, come at us, you know, cool. we're straightforward. Yeah, we're straight shooters. And like Matt is like, I will live out. Of, I'll live out of my car before I will agree to I'll let a bully push us anywhere. And Justin was on the same. Oh, yeah. Team. He would have lived in a different car. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah you know, it, I tricks. I think at its peak was a very, very, very vital part of the online magic community. And, and it was unique in that. And this is, I, I don't know if there have been many, in fact, I might be the only person for whom has come in without a desire to be a performing magician and wanted to cover the industry. Uh, in general, it's people who like to write that are also magicians that are covering it. And the mark of success, be you reviewing products or be you a, a, a blogger, is that once you have reached a certain power position, the way you know you have a power position is that you can rip people. There is very much a culture of like, okay, you know these guys are good because they're ripping people because they're saying that a trick isn't just bad it's a rip off and everybody involved in it should be ashamed of themselves uh and that's not anything that we ever really had a a a desire to do because i have no desire to gain status in the world of magic i mean if anything the coolest thing about itrix was meeting i've like there are a bunch of really rad people in the world of magic and I feel like I met all of them. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I, I I have made some of my best friends in that industry, and it was uh, uh it was really really cool. But there is no time where I was like cool, and now I can parlay that into. Uh, I mean, I think the only thing I've ever done in the world of magic was uh, uh come up with the idea of the all set up magician with Brian and have Andrew egg us on into performing it. Like that's, that is the, that is the furthest I feel like I will ever go in the world of magic. Uh, I, 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 I'd like to see a Vegas strip show of, of the, of all, the set all set up, up magician. Yeah. Do you think I can push it further? Yeah. Strip. Oh, Vegas. Strip. Okay. <laughs> all right. I just think uh. of the other one. Or you put it out as a filmmaking technique, and it's the J.J. Abrams mystery box. Yeah, there we go, right? Yeah, that's that's my new TED talk. Yeah, uh, it, but it was yeah, it was a very interesting experience, and I think that uh, for we were able to put this thing. The thing came together kind of quickly. We we assumed when we started that back in two thousand six that any day now some other big magic blog, the magic magazines or somebody else was going to come out with another magic blog and we we're going to have big competition. And I'm out of touch now. I have no idea. But we went a decade, a decade, because we'd get people who wanted to try to do it, but then to try to keep up with the pace that Justin did, you know, the four posts per day, the regularity, to use it for the right way, to not make it a mouthpiece for us, whatever, was hard. And so you get people who would start and might try, and then they gave up. Yeah. And then... You know, we kept it going for you know, 10 how, years. How, how much of that would you attribute to the lucky timing of the early days of Twitter where you could just follow all the magicians before anybody, you know, treated every tweet as a press release? Uh, I, I, I dealt very little with Twitter 
in my in my tenure. Nobody with, was with on Twitter back then. Yeah. 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 No, I I I ran iTrix with Google News Alerts and uh uh Google uh RSS. That was those were the ways. So it was me wading through a lot of Orlando Magic uh recaps, <laughs> uh a lot of uh, you know, uh, 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 dumb chum articles about the various magicians for which I had uh, name alerts uh, for, and then a few blogs that or or personal sites or um, I would follow, of course, all the Las Vegas um, magazines and stuff like or uh, newspapers because they would more regularly kind of cover the business elements of stuff like that. But that's that's how I ran it was was through that, and then periodically, you know, you you. Uh, have various YouTube stuff, but even, I mean, remember at that point, YouTube was still really in its infancy. I mean, right. like a uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter was certainly not. Uh, Twitter was a year later, South by South, when it had its big launch. Yeah, the, yeah, I guess yeah, we started pre-Twitter, so Jesus. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that was that was that, and really, it came from. I think if you write every day as I had coming out of school uh, for the newspaper, you just develop a, you know, a, a time to make the donuts kind of work ethic that not a lot of people have, man. Like it, 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 it sucks sometimes to know that like, I don't have it in me and there ain't no news, but four posts got to go up. So we're just going to tighten our cheeks and squeeze four out just because at the end of the day, people want to read something. They need something and they want to read about magic. And even if it's not a great news day, they will still be happy that it, it, it was there for them. Uh, and, and that's, you know, it taught me a lot uh, about what audience expectations were, you know, and, and I say this all the time with podcasting because podcasting is a similar grinding work ethic, although not quite a, on, on the daily basis. Uh, but when you have an audience and they are expecting something every day. If you don't show up for them, it might not be this dramatic, but it is in the same family. You are standing them up for a date. You have a standing offer to meet them. And if you don't put it up, then that is, you know, uh, uh, that is, that is a, a, a fracture, a little, a little, a little crack. It's, it's interesting to think about how, there's the job you want and then what the work is. And for Justin, you know, like he talks about the grind of having to every, follow the news, keep the news. Because a lot of times you think of our oh, reporting is going to be like, I'm going to be interviewing this person or doing this. And it's like, literally, it's like trying to get about those posts per day. And like Brian, I'd say that like, your job's video production. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you know, and, and on the outside, people go, oh, you're going to go do this. They're like, no, like the real job is real job's this. And like, you know, like what I do, uh, you know, as a writer, whether it's with, let's say my own writer, open AI, like my world's a word document. Yeah. You know? And that's what I get to do. And like, Oh, the fun of it to do this stuff. Like, yeah, but most of it's sitting in front of a screen going, how do I phrase this either for a book or for a press release or something? And it is very, it's interesting when you think you want to do a thing, try to understand what the work is. Like if you want to, you see people who play, you know, play professional sports. Like I remember when I wanted to be a swimmer and I got asked to try out for a, a swim team in South Florida and I showed up at practice and I'm going to sound like the stupidest person in the world. Okay. And I found out swim practice was just swimming a bunch of laps. <laughs> <laughs> there was no, no other exercises, no, no other little things, no activities. Been some of that, but it was like, all right, go in this lane. And for an hour, just go back and forth like a dumb porpoise. Keep, keep, keep going. Now don't use your hands. Now do use your hands. Now People make like, your yeah, hands you're... into fists. And wait until I tell you about track. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's often you got to know. And if you're like, I just love to swim. That's perfect. You know, like, and you have to think of like, what is the real job? What is the real work? If you're, when I was an illusionist and I would do like performing on ships and other places, my job was logistics. My job was getting, you know, a ton of equipment from here to Aruba, from here to Puerto Rico. That yeah. was the performing part was a very, very small, tiny part of it. The real work was trying to put these things, take these things apart, 
build these things up, go in there, figure this stuff out. And it was just all the logistics side of that. But sometimes, you know, you find out that if you have it, if you like it and you're good at it, um, you know, we know a person who does a lot of that for a famous magician who that person gets sought out by like professional sports teams because they want because yeah. a professional sports team. You're like, oh, hey, they're performing, you know, hey, they're performing in Houston tonight. How'd they get there? How is all the, yeah. how are all their uniforms there? How's all this there? Somebody made that magic happen. And there's a lot of times there's a lot, there's a real interesting world out there. Yeah. I mean, oh, Bri Brian and I have talked about, you know, when I was at the go game and he was traveling for the magic show that, that the real job is waking up and getting on the flight. Like, like the, the, the job is making sure that you can pack down to only carry ons. So you can make sure that the things you absolutely need will not get caught up in uh, uh, caught up in baggage like right. that. That's when you have to wake up at three o'clock to drive the hour in the snow from Ann Arbor to 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 the Detroit airport uh, because that's the only flight that really makes sense for you to get back. That's your actual job. Like the the, the performing is what it is. Free basically. Yeah. 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 It's like you know, being a director. You know, oh, I want to be on a set. I want to be a director. Okay, the director's job. Being on set doing stuff like that, that's 5% of what a director... On TV, it's different. In TV, you have a... But like film, you spend... You might spend a year or so in this, in meetings and stuff, and the actual amount of time you spend there yelling action and cut, very tiny compared to being in an office, talking to departments, going on the phone, going over there, looking at spreadsheets, looking at this stuff. And that's hard. A lot of people, they go into stuff like... Like for me, I wanted to be a performer. I'm like, oh, I like to be on stage and I like to perform. And then I realized... Well, yeah, but then you're going to spend six days not performing if you're in a good, good, like a good ship or wherever at a resort. And then also you're going to have to say the same thing every day for the next five years, which just drove me nuts. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, that's that's a part that that I, I guess I got off that train just in time because I, I had heard that it drove some people batty, but for me, it's like, it was always a chance to be just a little bit more polished every single time. Uh, uh, the gra that Groundhog Day existence, like one of these is gonna be flat out the very best show I've ever done. I, for me, I it hit me at like at 22 when I was in Japan and I was doing a show minimum twice a day, sometimes four times a day. And so, you know, doing in the span of 180 days, did something like 500 shows. Uh, that's like, you know, that was the end of it. You know, it had to be the same routine, the same thing. Like I hear like there, and that's why musicians are great. Like a musician, the beautiful thing about being a musician, if you love your music is, you know, like tomorrow, you know, I'm at Billy Joel's like tomorrow, the concert, I'm going to try to do just come in a little earlier. I'm going to come in and do that. And that, that makes, that's what makes for a great performers to find that for me. I just sort of, it was that that after the 500th show? <laughs> That's a I'm wrap. Out. That's a wrap. So, uh, do you guys have a, a read on on the the future of Itrix, or or is it well, too, Brian, too too certain to say? Brian, how do you feel about blogging? We want to know. If we wanna... <laughs> <laughs> We're looking. Yeah, we we got some eye on some top talent. Uh, uh -huh. I I could hire somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll figure out next steps. You know, part of it is we could just say, Hey, it's been a fun run, but part of it, you know, we, we kind of maybe try to take a look out to see if there's somebody out there who's wants to write and wants to do that. If, if we found somebody, we, we don't care as much about it making money as much as continuing doing, serving a purpose, like helping the magic community. And if there's somebody out there that says, Hey, I want to do this, then, you know, I'd be happy to pay out of pocket and make something happen to just keep serving the community with magic news. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think that that's, that, that is, uh, I was very, very happy to find Michael, uh, to, to take over when I, when I, you know, did not have it in me anymore to, to kind of do that grind. Uh, but I do think that it, it matters a lot. It, it does matter a lot in a, in an industry that can very much be at its worst backbitey, but at its best, uh, deserves to be celebrated. And, and, you know, at the time that I was doing it, it was really, really, really cool to watch people get television opportunities and, and watch uh, uh, shows continue to expand. And there's a lot of positive things that, that are happening right now in the magic world. And I think that oftentimes, if all you do is pay attention to the, the kind of interactions, the very small interactions with between magicians, drama winds up getting elevated 
uh, personal feelings wind up getting uh, elevated. And, and I think for people who actually want to take it as a serious art, as something that is a professional art for a lot of people, either to follow it or if people want to follow in the footsteps of, of giants, it, it is, it's, it's hard if you don't have a kind of North star. And, and that's what I was, I was very proud that I tricks um, has always been. And if somebody else who's listening to this right now wants to try their hand at it, uh, uh, you know, trust me, it's going to make you a better writer. It's going to make you a better researcher. And it's going to make you, uh, you know, I, I think if you are interested in magic, uh, somebody that, that uh, you'll have every magician's <laughs> email address, <laughs> no matter how big or I, how small, I'll guarantee you that after, after three years. And, and that point too, like I trick sort of also, it kind of served as a way for me to kind of be aware of everything that was going on in like the world of magic and television. And so when I would go pitch, I knew, oh yeah, somebody already pitched Fox. They pitched this thing, don't step on what they're doing, do something different or go do this. And that was helpful. That was like, it was as an intelligence gathering organization, there's nothing like running your own you know, news organization to sort of know everything that's going on. And that was fascinating because we had, we eventually had people from uh, like Vegas bloggers would go to us to ask us like new, like journalists and stuff would ask us about things Yeah, because, you know, basically Justin had his hands and everything. So that was the other side of it was like, Oh wow, I know this, you know, I know, I know what everybody's up to in magic. I know what everybody's up to and what's going on where Just a neat benefit. Yeah. So there you go, folks. If, you, if you're listening to this and you have an interest then uh, hit us up. If you think of somebody, you know, you know, yeah. think of somebody who, you know, can find somebody. <laughs> I take it over. It's like today's headline, Brian Brushwood, still awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scam stuff brought to you by. You know, it is funny yeah. because that was one thing that we always resisted, uh, which was to merge kind of Andrew's uh, personal trick creation brand with with iTricks and there were some people that we would talk to and they were baffled by it. They couldn't understand. It's like, wait, you guys get at what traffic and everybody knows your name and you're not selling the iTricks tricks. You're not selling like, like iTricks branded products. You're not just buying trick decks and, and selling them on the iTricks store. Like, why are you so stupid? Why wouldn't you do that? And it was like, because then we're going to be in a situation, A, we're going to be in a situation where we're competing with our advertisers, which is not necessarily what we wanted to do because we, for, first and foremost, wanted to be an advertising brand. But also it's like, then someone's going to hate our trick and it's going to taint the idea of the blog. It's going to taint the idea because a trick can be something that somebody thinks is their trick. And it's like, well, I do this thing, but with a a chrome thimble as opposed to a black one. So like now I hate your entire site. Now your entire idea that everything that you've ever written is, 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 is tainted, which it just shows you how myopic, uh, you know, magic can kind of be. If anybody's getting any kind of attention, sell, sell a stripper deck immediately. Yeah. And what we did too is, uh, our attitude was when we did reviews, like we'd only talk about if somebody to review, like I said, if you like it, review it, Promote it. Otherwise, don't trash it. And also, we're not going to be—we're not going to be a little tiny in club. Anybody can be a member. Anybody can be part of the fun. We're not going to have—we're not going to pick winners and losers. We're not going to have outsiders. Anybody wants to be part of it. We just want to be inclusive because there was already so much of that in Magic. There was already so much of that. Well, this group here, or those people. I'm like, we're all nerd outsiders. Yes. You know, and let's just make a place where everybody feels welcome. That's what we've done. With weird things too, is we created weird things with the idea of like. Hey, if you believe in UFOs, cool. We'd love to talk. Not yeah. to try to talk you out of it, but we'd like to talk about UFOs because they're cool. We wanted to create a place where, you know, these things that these weird stuff is celebrated. And we're critical thinkers about it, but we don't want anybody to feel excluded from it. Yeah. And with you know, with iTrix, it was like, yeah, let's create, let's let's not try to be, oh, we're gonna be the cool kids and be exclusive. Like, no, like you're in a forum, cool, glad to meet you. Right. Do picks? Let's pick. Let's pick. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, I'll double down on Book of Boba Fett. Um, I'm going to keep watching. I have to. Yeah. That's, that's a ringing endorsement. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, so Euphoria's back. 
Are you a euphoria guy? Where you... where 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 a euphoria household? Uh, um, I wouldn't recommend watching it if you have Brian. You're not allowed to watch it, right? <laughs> I forbid you from watching I, it. I've heard. Uh, so if I ever hear tale of you watching this, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna slap that euphoria right out of your hands. Got it. Uh, uh, but uh, for folks who don't have teenage or tween girls then then uh uh it it is a very very stylized almost reefer madness level hysteria of teens gone wrong uh and every possible thing that uh uh has has uh bedeviled our modern society um i don't quite know if it has much to say but i sure know it likes saying it <laughs> uh it's very stylized it's like, it's zendaya good. is is a very compelling lead uh and uh, uh the the cast is good uh boy is it walking well, out of the concert and you're like looks like you guys had a lot of fun up there <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, like you you get to the end and you're like damn this is an incredibly well-made show like there's no way to deny that like it is just an insane a uh, uh, spectacle and the characters are likable and they're in high school, but they all look 25, which is very good because half of them are naked and having sex at all times. But like a uh, uh, boy, I don't really know exactly what the point is, except to say these screwed up kids. Uh, I, uh, here I got, I got a pick. If you, if, if someone's listening to this and maybe they want to get, interested in writing um we, we've talked about it before but uh substack is a great way to just roll mm -hmm. roll a blog for free um you know when i started doing the marble stuff uh last year um i uh used a substack so that i had a, had a mailing list um but then i ended up folding that also in like i had a part of the website that was like news and i would put news things there and um, that ended up being a lot of the exact same thing that was on the email list. So that web page got deleted. Um, and uh, that's the interesting thing about Substack is that it is an email list, but it's also like it is a blog. Like your posts get archived, they get stayed there, you can update them. Um, and I think that's that's some of the secret sauce with Substack. So if you're interested in writing and you got something you you are interested in writing about, um, check out Substack. It's, it's an easy way to do it. Um, and it's it kind of feels like the free WordPress website of of 2020. Very much so. And when you think about what a blog was and why it mattered, you know, back when we, you know, uh, and this is like at the point that Gawker's making a ton of money, BuzzFeed's just starting. Like uh, the internet was smaller. Right. It was easier to kind of go to these little destinations and find exactly what you wanted. I think you also had still, more that, that 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 still exists for. Um, niche things where you're gonna crawl over glass to get the information, but uh, the modern blog I think is good old fashioned email, man. Uh, 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 boy, boy, does it keep on trucking that email? I love it, especially you know after the past you know what ten or fifteen years of RSS um, being kind of pushed into the quiet dark corner of the internet, yeah. And being pushed aside for other other ways of reaching people. So I don't know. I I, I think uh, check out Substack. You could you could do worse for free. Yeah. Andrew, you got. I love. Oh. Yeah, I love. I'll just to reinforce too. What I love Substack because like Medium drives me nuts. Um, that's not me getting blurry. That's just you all hallucinating. Uh, Medium drives me nuts sometimes. Like trying to copy paste like code examples from there is frustrating. And Medium sometimes you get. I finally had to pay for the wall, which I frustrated. But like Substack, I love because way more beneficial to the writers if they want to sell their stuff. So big fan of that. My pick is I have not watched the latest episode out tonight, but I went and rewatched season one of Righteous Gemstones. Guess what? Holds up. Still good. Yeah. I watched the two episodes are live. Two I episodes. watched the first one um, and I'm excited to see the second one because I'm, I, I suspect that there's a reason why they released uh, both of them at the same time. I know that, uh, they were in the process of shooting this season before the pandemic. I know that they were they were shooting while I was in South Carolina for the primary. They then obviously 
took a hiatus uh uh you know because the, the the pandemic shut everything down and then they've shut they've shot a bunch of stuff so i don't know how much of this is kind of matching stuff i know that there's a few touches that kind of allude to the fact that this season takes place in a post pandemic world but not anything super uh uh intense but uh uh i'm i'm excited to see the second episode but i'm just glad that these characters are back in my life because they're, i love them so much they're all so brilliantly acted and and it's often easy easy for like Edie Patterson to forget that's an actress playing that you know like Judy Ken Gemstone. in succession yeah yeah like Ken in succession where you're like oh this guy's the worst and it's like strong like you're like no he's a brilliant actor and then her it's like she just does it you just go back and you just start to really appreciate just how talented everybody is in that um so uh, very much, and then maybe you go. I never watched Eastbound and Down, so I went and watched Eastbound and Down. Oh wow! What'd you think? Oh, I really liked it. It 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 is a uh, Danny McBride. I think is super talented, and and some some like I I couldn't get into Vice Principals because I didn't think there I didn't think there was anything likable about that character. Uh, in in Eastbound and Down, little you have to sort of work for it to sort of find that is there. You do. There is a center to him. There is a yes. point where you realize that he has that, and you realize, oh, okay, cool. You know, and then once I grasp that, I really enjoyed the show. Thoroughly enjoyed Eastbound and Down. So, um, Danny McBride. Yeah, I, I think uh, 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 Eastbound and Down and Gemstones kind of fall into a similar genre of like, you know, Eastbound and Down was based on the archetype of John Rocker, the the you know flamboyant uh, uh, you know baseball save guy who. Uh, or baseball reliever save guy, a uh, baseball reliever who like gave a very inflammatory uh, interview about being on the New York subway and all the colorful things and people that you see while being on the New York subway. So that was like a takeoff of that with the idea being like, well, does this guy have a, like, he's very arrogant. He's very flamboyant. Does how, what is inside? And I think that it's a similar idea with, with the mega church preacher family of of the gemstones where it's like yes there is a ton of artifice yes everything that if you want to criticize them or love them that's there but what is inside and what i love about the gemstones is that they never really takes away either argument like uh, uh yes they are uh venal <laughs> vain argumentative uh, uh, people filled with wretched excess and exactly, but also they are, they do believe on some level that this is a job and it's important that they go out there and do this job. They never take away the idea. It's not, they, they don't ever have this moment of snickering, like secret atheism sort of, uh, uh yeah. element. And I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I like that. That's what I liked about gemstones too, is that it's a, they treat them as if they're sincere, that their Christianity is is real. And 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 uh, even though I'm a non-believer, I respect that. I watched recently The Eyes of Tammy Faye, which mm. was the movie based upon the documentary. And it was in about Tammy Faye Baker and Jim Baker. And it was interesting because like they, they tried to do that there, but it was, it was a bit of a back and forth sort of herky-jerky sort of thing. But like Gemstone's really dealing with the same thing and kind of people kind of influenced by that to a bit. I, I like the fact they respect the fact that these people are devout and they, they, they do, they do, they are Christian. They are Christians who are very much into wealth and yeah. these other flaws, but, um, you know, but there can be worse flaws that sometimes institutions of faith can have, but I, I respected that. And I'm sure that there's going to be in the long run where the story goes or the narrative goes that, you know, is you know, probably going to be impacted, but, but yeah, I did, I did like that, that it wasn't like, ah, you know, we're a secretly Ayn Rand reading, you know, libertarian atheists who don't believe anything. They're like, no, they're, they're Christian people. Yeah. Who, you know, who have came from Christian failings yeah. and they're humans and, and, you know, they're trying to reach the broadest group possible and that has its own cause. And also Edie Patterson is just a, a murderer. I mean, the fact that she can yeah. get laughs at that level uh, uh, with Danny McBride and Adam Devine, who are two of the most like look at me, cartoony kind of performers there are, and she stands out like that. That she should have gotten an Emmy for that first season because that is yeah. that's about as hard as a degree of difficulty you can have in comedy. Yep. Oh, there you go. Righteous gemstones. Boom. Nice. Praise be. 
And she was now holding his hand in in, in, in devotional. <laughs> uh, Say the thing. How, how's it been? It's been after. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us here for some weird things and after things. We'll be back in about two and a half hours with some cord killers. Yeah. Coming up here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We're going to hop off the air now. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Can I finish my granola bar now, Bryce? Please. Finally. Wait for this to turn the stream off. <laughs> You're good, too.